I've been totally punked by Fusion 360, and I'll tell you how. Waiting for files to rebuild, waiting for drawings to update. This happens to me in every CAD tool that I've ever worked with. So if you're working with a top-end $10,000 computer, or you're working with an old out-of-date machine that you inherited, either way, you should optimize your machine so that it can run the best it can. I'm gonna cover 16 tips on how you can optimize your machine to run better with Fusion 360. Here we go. And I'd like to thank Dell for their support in sending me a Precision 7750 to test out and review on this channel. So when you jump into Fusion 360, one thing you wanna be thinking about is all the challenges when it comes to the graphical display. So the first thing you wanna call out is support diagnostics and the help. This is terrific for figuring out if you have the right driver for your specific graphics card. Hopefully you have a dedicated graphics card. This happens to have a Quadro RTX 5000 and I can do a quick check for the driver update. The other thing that's great here is you've got a shortcut into optimizing for speed. So I love to check this one and this is going to make some of these important selections when it comes to graphical requirements. So this is now catering to performance over looking great in the graphical display. Next, let's go into preferences. In preferences, if you first go to design, one is to turn off this active component visibility. Let's look at what that actually does. So when I go to edit a specific part in Fusion 360, I make activate it in the assembly Everything else is set to this wireframe and having to display all of this and all of these faces is taxing my graphics card and the graphical display and unnecessarily, it's not bringing a lot of value to me. So now you can activate a component within an assembly and everything else will kind of remain the same. You might also want to use isolate if that's how you'd like to see just the part by itself or the component by itself. Back in the preferences, let's jump down into the graphics. So a few to be aware of, you can downgrade to a simple display style, as well as set the minimum frame rate. I love to put something in like 60. What this does is it forces it to always behave in a fast way and apply that so that it will basically downgrade the visual quality in order to keep a high frame rate for you during your display. Also, these checkboxes of limit effects, as well as limit the effects when the memory is low. These are great to check. Okay, the next thing, if you're still struggling with the display in the assembly or with a complex part, you can come to the top level, right click, choose display detail control. What this lets you do is set a fixed level of display detail. If you set this to low, if I were to zoom in on this rounded edge here, you'll notice that instead of seeing a nice smooth round edge, you can see that it's a series of line segments uh, that make up this arc. So, you know, a circle will look almost more like a multi-sided uh, shape than one smooth continuous line, which is usually more than acceptable when it comes to working um, in larger assemblies or designs like this where it's even hard to make out those details, but it makes a big difference from the visual display challenge. Another thing that you can do that will improve your performance visually or graphics wise, go into Windows, in Windows Control Panel, search for effects. You'll notice there's this system effects that you can control, and this has to do with just different visual settings when it comes to Windows behavior. You have best appearance, which has some of these nice animations and things and scrolling and sliding and just extra stuff, really. Uh, if you go to best performance, you'll notice it's somewhat Spartan. It turns all of this off. You might want to keep on thumbnails instead of icons. That might be one. I got this tip from John Saunders over at NYC CNC. And another thing that he threw out there, he's a big believer that your visual display matters in a number of monitors. Um, I, I have noticed uh, better performance when I don't have multiple 4K monitors all going at once. Um, but that being said, I usually am running multiple monitors and this graphics card has done a totally adequate job keeping up with that. But just keep in mind that you are taxing that resource by uh, using multiple monitors and the resolution 
of those monitors does also impact that. Next thing I wanna talk about is computation challenges. So you want to eliminate any red or yellow that might be in your design tree. So these dependencies, these features are trying to solve and these are warning me that they can't solve properly. These are failing too. And these are warnings. They are missing some of their references. These fillets are probably just missing edges that are no longer there when I made edits to the previous design. So go back, remove those so that you can solve without it. Also, a good practice is to use existing geometry or reference geometry that's always going to be there. For example, rather than using this face, it's probably smarter that I use the corresponding plane because this reference plane will always be there. If I start a sketch on that later, if this geometry gets removed or cut away or changed, this reference plane will still be there and able to solve. So good rule of thumb, use the reference geometry. Now let's talk about some of the challenges for Fusion 360 that relate really just to your machine. So if you wanna go look at your task manager, you'll notice that you have a bunch of processes that are probably running. And if you look at what's running in the CPU, what's taking up memory, I'm recording this video and running Fusion 360. I do have Google Chrome open. I don't have a bunch of tabs or anything. Um, I'm not taxing my machine terribly hard right now. If I go into performance, I can get a feel for you know what's being utilized and what's happening. If I were to switch gears and start reinstalling a bunch of Adobe products, Premiere, After Effects, and also maybe start up a bunch of apps, you'll notice that that's going to start hogging some CPU, some memory, and this is not a great way to work when you're trying to work in Fusion 360 or any other CAD program. Uh, definitely have noticed that through the years when people are trying to run a lot all at once that your design tool will probably start to suffer and get bogged down in your machine. So great practice to clean up, close your apps, and, and that leads to my next tip. It's a great idea, of course, to reboot and to restart your machine often and kind of practice some of those general hygiene uh, steps when it comes to running your machine. So general hygiene, one thing I love for Windows is using a tool to clean, help me clean up my registry, help me clean out some of the junk that's on the machine. I used to love CC Cleaner. I don't like using it as much anymore since they've kind of changed it over the years. Um, I, I would love to hear from the community here on what you guys like. One that I have had some decent luck with is System Mechanic. Now this, they do have, I believe, a free trial, but um, it's a paid tool, you know, roughly 15 to $30 a year, something like that. I've had really good luck with the performance there. That's a good tool. When it comes to Mac, my favorite by far is Clean My Mac for keeping my machine running smoothly. I use this tool pretty often um, when I'm working on my Mac and Mac OS. And finally, I have found some great articles recently on the forum. Uh, some of the tips and tricks that I mentioned already, um, you know, around the graphics, but you want to drill down into some of the specifics for uh, working with um, your, you know, general system requirements, performance with large files and cam. Um, if you're crashing often, some of these are great. So I will link this in the description down below.